Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this, which is probably most commonly known as a tank suit. It's an oversuit designed for armoured vehicle crews to wear over their, their uniform. Uh, really designed for cold weather. It's quite heavily lined. It's a very effective piece of, uh, of protective clothing for armoured vehicle crews. Introduced in July 1943, it would appear these suits were in use into at least the very, very late 1950s, early 1960s. You can see some footage here from Pathé News which show another nice feature, the camouflage version of the tank suit, which was also produced using the same brush stroke camouflage as used on British windproof clothing. And this does illustrate that the tank suits were still in use at this later period, post Second World War. And I'll put a card in the corner of the video here, linking through to the original video, should you wish to have a look at that. And it's a very uh, all singing, all dancing uh, piece of protective clothing. It's got a lot of features, a myriad of pockets, which we'll look at as we uh, look over this, various internal features designed to make it more specific to its design role uh, for armoured vehicle crews, and we're going to talk about the various features of this through the video as we normally do. Of course we have up here of course the Royal Armoured Corps helmets and, and a set of MT goggles just to set this off. I'm going to remove that now and we'll talk about the suit and its uh, various features and the various components of its design. So we've removed the helmet now, we'll start talking about the various features and we'll start up at the top. Uh, as a starting point. You can see that this is it's made of a, a heavy cotton canvas outer material and then you have a, a wool lining which you can see at the collar here. Now the collar is designed to be turned right up and you in fact have originally you would have two straps. You can see one here, this one here has been lost or removed. This suit in particular has had a hard life, it's quite beaten up but I rather like it that way. You, they do turn up for the 50s dates uh, in quite pristine condition. Uh, but this is a second war example which has certainly uh, been through the wars uh, it's the few bits and pieces missing on it one of the one of which is this strap that should be on the collar here but you can see the the corresponding buckle on this side and the lower one here which means the collar can be bu buckled right up and, and round like that to give added protection and in addition there is a detachable hood which you can see here which is rather stiff which itself is wool lined again we will have a look at this a little bit more in, in detail in a moment. There are holes in the lining here for where you might be wearing a headset. And this also has buttons, as you can see at the front there. So that can be buttoned round as well to make this a very effective protective garment. As I say, it's detachable and it actually attaches using Newey press studs all the way around. So I'm going to detach this now and we'll have a look at that separately in just a moment. So we'll put that to one side for the moment. So there's the collar. When we turn this round, you'll be able to see the, the male uh, side of the press studs which allow the hood to be attached. It can of course be worn without the hood uh, as we have it now. There are two zips right the way down the front and as we'll see I'll, I'll take this off the mannequin shortly and show the legs as well. These go right the way down the legs so the suit can be entirely opened out and flattened out and this piece just comes down the front. You could almost put it on the ground, lie in it and then zip it up around yourself like a sleeping bag. Uh, it is entirely uh, split by these two zips that run right the way down the front. And the other fastening you have externally here is an integral waist belt, which uses a, a later battle dress type buckle, tooth buckle, as you can see there, made in the same material as the rest of the garment. When it comes to pockets, we have two breast pockets. The left one, of course, as you wear it, includes loops for pens, pencils, that sort of thing. Both of these are closed with large Newey press studs, as you can see there. Get that closed again. There we go. Down on the hip here, you have a dressing pocket, as you can see, and this is of the two pleat variety, which would be standard by the time this was introduced. No button to it, but it is a standard style of dressing pocket. And then you might be able to see on the legs, we have two upper pockets on the legs. You can see here, this one's actually another area where there's a bit of damage to this. It's actually missing its press stud, as you can see there. But there's another one on this side as well. We'll have a closer look at the legs. There are in fact two pockets on each leg, as we'll see, uh, on the front of each leg, as we'll see when we uh, look at this raised off the mannequin to show you the lower part of it. Move this round now and have a look at the left hand side. Looking at the left hand side here we can see there are epaulettes on this and these are again fixed with a new press stud as you can see there. So all fixtures and fittings externally are of new press stud uh, type. At the cuffs we have an adjustment tab which again has a, a press stud here and then another male press stud there so that can be tightened in. And then internally there is also an elasticated cuff as well as you can see there. It'll be a little clearer to see because I will turn this inside out so we can have a look at all the internal details. You can see there is elbow reinforcement there. You can see a half circle 
uh, stitched in there, front and back. If I lift this out of the way, you can see underneath we have the loop for the belt there. And then we have side pockets here, which are not only a pocket, there is a pocket in there, but also a hole through to the inner trousers you possibly see in there. So you can get at the pockets of the garment worn underneath, and there's also a hip pocket integral to the suit as well. And again, closed with the new press stud. It's interesting to note that the flap is sewn down at each corner. So that's the, the design of the pockets on the hip there. We'll move this around now and we'll have a look at the back. Looking at the back here, you can see the seam details of the construction there. Really is a very heavyweight garment. We do have reinforcing to the seat as well. And you can see this belt is integrally sewn on just by this strip at the rear here. It is otherwise free, but it's attached in the center of the back there. I turn the collar up. We can see that the several press studs around the base of the collar there where the hood can be attached. The final thing to talk about externally is the right hand side of the suit. And if we just lift this out of the way, you can see better detail of the dressing pocket there down on the leg. The, obviously the loop again for the, the waist belt there. And you can see again how this has had something of a hard life, uh, some damage and so forth to the, the outside here. And it's overall quite stained, but I don't mind that. As I say, it's a garment that's been used and has a bit of history to it. So I'm quite happy to have one that's, that's a bit worn. So I've raised this up on the mannequin now so we can have a look at the details lower down on the suit. We're, this is waist height here and we can see at the front here we do have a zip fly underneath this flap here you can see the brass zip there so that conceals a brass zip for a fly there obviously we have the dressing pocket which we've already mentioned we have the two uh, pockets just below fly level on the fronts of the legs and if we look down here if we raise the leg up you can see there's another pocket lower down on the leg essentially the same design and then down at the bottom here just above the the hem of the trousers we have a new press done on a little tab here for adjusting the ankle in so the ankle can be tightened in as well and we have basically exactly the same on the other leg as you can see there lower pocket and then the adjustment down there on the leg you can see the male press stud there and the minui the there you can see it's quite a bit of wear to these again they've been heavily used uh, and you can see that there again not a problem from my perspective quite happy to have that you can also see the uh, reinforcement piece here, there's reinforcement to the knees, just as there was with the elbows. So that's the lower part of the tank suit. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at the hood and then we'll turn this inside out and have a look at the internals and get a shot of the label and so forth as well. So here's the hood in a bit more detail and you can see we have the line of new press studs around the back, we have five of them there. And internally you can see the, the female side of those, these just snap onto the, the lower part of the uh, neck, the collar, of the uh, suit itself. We have two of the uh, relatively early uh, battle dress buttons in, in brown here you can see and they just button around the front there to close up the hood. You can see we do have a channel and opening here for a draw. You can see we do have a channel here and openings for a draw cord but that's not fitted in this instance. There is a channel for that around the outside. And then looking at the inside you can see this is entirely lined with wool apart from sections here which obviously mean you can wear a headset and don't interfere with wearing a headset and openings neatly uh, worked into the design there well it's just a single layer of canvas uh, over each ear essentially so you can see the stitching for that on the outside here and you can see the construction we have the, the seams running across here to, to gather this in and make the shape of the hood it's a bit stiff this just from age um, but uh, it is what it is, and as I say, there's quite a lot uncommon to find, certainly 50s dated examples, uh, but I believe this is a wartime one. There's no label, unfortunately, but it does have those relatively early colour of, of buttons, synonymous with 1942 uh, dated battle dress uh, around at that time before the, uh, the slightly greener colour come into use. So that would indicate to me this is a wartime, a wartime hood. So there we are. One detail to mention just before turning this wholly inside out to show you all the internal details, is this section over the torso here with four bath dress buttons. So you have a button closure underneath the two zips. I've unfastened both zips all the way down. That center section has just fallen away. But underneath you have this button over section that just closes over the torso there. And let's say four battle dress type buttons. All the external fixtures, all the external uh, fastenings are newly press studs, but you do have these four buttons here underneath these zips down the front of the suit. So now we have the oversuit turned inside out. And as I said before, it is an all singing, all dancing design. There's 
quite a few uh, features to talk about internally that can't be seen outside. One of the first things to note is the fact that it's largely lined in wool, in wool flannel, the same material that shirts at the time were made from. So it's, it's quite heavily lined for warmth. You have at the top here, obviously, if we turn this back, this is the button panel we, were, we saw on the outside. You can see the button holes down there. We have an internal breast pocket here, and another one on the other side. So two internal breast pockets there. We also have these features here, which are braces, internal braces, which help to support the weight of the tank suit because it's quite a heavy garment. And you can see they essentially are just like the external waist belt. They use a battle dress style buckle there. They're made in the same way. They're attached at front and rear, as we'll see as we turn this round. And on the shoulder, there's actually a channel that these pass through. So these loop through this channel sewn onto the shoulders, which is made of the same material, just to keep them on the shoulder, stop them slipping off. So we've got those braces there, those integral braces. On this hip here, you have a pocket sewn in made of wool. You can see a single button for that there. So we have another internal pocket there. And down the front here, you can see the inside of the fly, the zip fly there, which wasn't as clear to see externally, but you do have that extra zip there for the fly. And then you have the zips coming down, obviously where they zip all the way down the legs to open the whole thing out. We'll turn this around now and we'll have a look at the left-hand side. So looking at the left-hand side, we can perhaps see that the channel sewn in on top of the shoulder there, the brace passes through. See the inside of the cuffs there, and you can see this elasticated section, which is an in internal, uh, in, in, in internal cuff. You can see the, the main part of the cuff coming out there, but we have this elasticated inner section. If we open this up, you can see that slit there that opens up to allow you to access your, your inner pockets, and obviously the inside of the press stud for the uh, pocket flap on the hips there. Move this around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the suit here, we can see this is entirely lined in wool, and then we have the rear the braces here stitched on at the back there as you can see and it's lined all the way down to the ankle essentially with this wool flannel fabric. The final thing to mention of course is the label which is hidden in a sneaky little position just inside the elasticated cuff on the left hand sleeve as we have it here which is the right hand sleeve when it's worn uh, the right way out of course and you can see the details of that here. It reads Oversuit Tank Cruise and then we have the size number four and the sizing details there as you can see made by Belmont and Company Limited and dated 1945, as you can see there. So there we are. I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. It's certainly a very iconic piece of British Second War era clothing, but also worn in Korea, of course, as well, and worn beyond that, as noted at the start of the video, at least until the early 1960s. Hopefully this has been of interest to you. If it has and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I usually say, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to make contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.